The year is 2021, and it feels like games just aren't fun anymore. Skyrim isn't giving you that immersion it once offered, Minecraft just isn't hitting the same, and the delicate storytelling of Beach... <laughs> and it feels like games just aren't as fun anymore. That vibrant shelf of video games we used to always look up to as a kid has just turned into a desaturated Excel spreadsheet. I used to be able to dump 300, 500 hours in Skyrim and enjoy all of it. Now it's just not the same. Where did all that passion go? And more importantly, can we get it back? But in this video, we're specifically looking at the neuroscience behind how exactly new games hijack our reward systems through variable reinforcement, behavior reinf- Oh, uh, wait a minute through behavioral conditioning, variable reinforcement, hedonic adaption, the, uh, but to understand the issue first, we have to break down what's going on in the AAA games industry right now. I, I don't even know why people are rushing out to buy the Xbox X, NXX, or the PS5 hub. It makes no sense to me. Are people really like that desperate for fucking bug snacks? The truth of the matter is, the gaming industry has completely changed from just making fun, artful games to profit-driven, low-risk game design, which means we get a lot of the same things recycled over and over again. It's kind of hard to like get $20 million of investor money just to make a game that might not even do well in the market. So they stick to things like, you know, loot crates, raider crates, battle passes. To shoehorn that into some form of cookie cutter, market proven formula, and investors are happy. And now, all the more creative titles that feature weird and new, unique gameplay like Blinking or God fucking knows what are all now being created by smaller independent third party studios which is a bit of an issue because they have nowhere near the resources and marketing budgets that these bigger companies have. But that's only one side of the coin. The reason why games aren't fun anymore is more than just games being less inspired from a development perspective. There's something going on with our reward centers that's hijacking all of the joy we used to experience with them. Oh my god, that's... Disorienting. To understand the rest of the points in this video, we have to understand a few core mechanics on how our brains function. The first of which is muscle memory. I know you think you know what muscle memory is, but I doubt you really know the true mechanics behind it. See, whenever you do something new, like learn a new instrument or use your non-dominant hand, your brain is forced to use neural networks in your brain that rarely get used. And thus, those pathways are very inefficient. So if I'm trying to draw like a smiley face with my left hand, I'm gonna suck at doing it. But the more I use those neurons in my head, the better I become at sending those electronic signals through my brain. The reason this is kind of f***ing insane is that there was a study done with three groups of basketball players. One group practiced throwing three throws with a physical ball into a hoop. The second group did the same amount of practice, but they just sat there thinking about throwing three throws with a basketball. And then the third group didn't practice at all. The next day when they went to test their skills to see how much they've improved, the group that threw physical basketballs improved at 24%. And the group that only thought about throwing basketballs improved 23%. 3%. That's fucking crazy. This tells us that just by thinking, we can change the way our brain processes signals. We can change thoughts, behaviors, actions, reflexes, skills, whatever it is, by just thinking things. The second core mechanic of our brain lies within its ability to strongly associate memories and experiences. There's a saying that neurons that fire together, wire together. It's how our brain recalls information. It's easier to remember answers to a test if you're listening to a very specific song and then listen to that song again while taking the same test. Oddly enough, it's strongest with smell. I don't, I don't know why, it just is. We smell, smell recalls memory. <laughs> And this can be done with a lot of things on a smaller scale. The first real world example of this as to why video games aren't really fun anymore is that we can look back to our younger childhood years in which games weren't as readily available to us. First of all, we didn't have as much money to buy games, there weren't as many games out there, and when you got a new AAA game that was kind of expensive, that was the game you played. And for better or for worse, you just had to make the best of it because that's what you had for a while. I only had access to a couple games, and I'm sure if you were around my age, yeah, we... <laughs> Oh, God, I can't do a fucking take tonight. Ah. Uh. And the takeaway there is that we often associated higher values to rarity, which is something we already do naturally, right? Like rare things are more valuable because there's less of it. In today's gaming ecosphere, we can get our hands on just about anything. Monthly passes, emulation, borrowing, Steam sales, borrowing. Rarity in gaming has disappeared, and with it, our own perception of the game's worth. Now, the reason that's so important is because we also had way lower standards as kids. Like, everything's new, everything's more exciting, so when we're playing a new AAA game, like, fucking playing Banjo-Kazooie, collecting fucking puzzle pieces was like, fuck yeah, dude. Oh my god, did I just turn into a fucking ball? Oh my god, I can jump 
twice in the f***ing air. I can play bongos in this game. That threshold for fun we used to have when we were younger has significantly risen, and we've been scarred from the countless half-baked releases from the same companies we've grown up with. We are now psychologically predisposed to dislike the games that come out before they even hit the shelves. This in and of itself isn't a huge deal psychologically. It's something that's gonna stop us from truly enjoying a game. It's a slippery psychological slope that predisposes us to not enjoying new titles when they first come out. Not a big deal. But what is a big deal is hedonic adaption. And to understand that, we have to understand our reward systems in our brain, primarily focusing on dopamine and the dopamine D2 receptor, located in our hippopotamus. It's pretty understood that anything that gives you pleasure will give you less pleasure over time. It's just how our brains work in response to stimuli. And there's a couple reasons for this. The first of which is homeostasis. <laughs> Gay. Our brains like to make sure that whatever we're experiencing or feeling, there's a chemical balance that's trying to be maintained in our head. So if we get large triggers of dopamine in our brain over and over and over again, our receptors are going to downregulate in response to that. This is especially true in something that is called variable reinforcement. A variable reinforcement is when there's not always a certain outcome in things. For example, take a gumball machine. You put one quarter in, you twist it, and you get one gumball out. Nothing really happens in terms chemically in our brain. That's not a huge stimulus. That's just a transaction. But say by accident, you put in a quarter and then you twist the knob and two gumballs come out. Now we've got bells and whistles going off in our brains and we just got something extra special that wasn't anticipated. And our dopamine response systems are going to tell us to remember that thing and want more of it. However, However, if we put a quarter in and we always get two gumballs out, well, that's no longer exciting because now it's just a known thing that we always get to experience. This system in our head is what keeps animals alive. It's what tells animals that like, hey, that water hole we found in the middle of nowhere is like, holy shit, there's water there. We didn't expect that. Remember that, because we're going to need that later. That's what the dopamine response system is doing in our brain. The reason I bring that up is that video games use this mechanic in the gameplay to keep you expecting stimulus throughout playing the game. For example, look at PUBG, all right, or any form of battle royale. You drop in without a loadout, and part of the game is just finding high-level equipment so you can be better equipped to kill the other players in arena. This is a super important concept, because half the fun of the game is feeling that rush of dopamine when you get like the golden scar or legendary butt plug it's an excitable thing because it's not something that you normally expect to get when you're dropping in the reason variable reinforcement is so important is that it shows us how our brain can be easily overstimulated with dopamine within a very short amount of time and when you keep exposing yourself to these things over and over and over again all of a sudden you're going to start deregulating your reward system not to say that you're not going to get enjoyment from it but you're not going to be as sensitive to those feelings i noticed this personally when i put in a couple thousand hours in counter-strike I was hell bent on just seeing my improvement in the game and playing with all my friends. And I noticed that over time, I just couldn't be bothered to play any other single player story rich game. And I realized my short term payouts had all of a sudden dried up and I just couldn't enjoy longer games. I needed that constant short term stimulation to stay intrigued. And that's what leads us to hedonic adaption. Hedonic meaning pleasure, adaption meaning uh, adaption. Fuck, I don't know why. It Hedonic adaption, which says whatever baseline normal emotional state you're in, it'll move depending on your normal environment or circumstances. For example, people who have lost all their limbs have reported the same amount of happiness as people who have won the lottery. That's crazy. It's because over time, our brains get used to that chemical state, whether it be unfortunate or super fortunate, our brains get accustomed to that level and make that our new baseline. And the same thing goes for video games. Regardless of what games you play, if you feel like they're becoming more more stale over time, it's probably because you've had similar stimulus hitting your brain over and over and over again. And as a result, that hedonic baseline has shifted to match that new stimulus. So how do you fix that? Abstaining from that same stimulus will help regulate those receptors in your brain. It takes a while to recover from it. But when you walk away from that, you get those natural chemical levels to rebalance in your head. And all that down regulation begins to recover. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. It's basically the long and short of it. And if you want to stimulate my reward center, hit that subscribe button and maybe check out some of my other videos like this one, for example, which is one of the first videos I've made that I'm actually proud of.